is. And the number one question I'm getting regarding the flat earth is the firmament or the dome. And how do so-called meteorites and asteroids penetrate or get through the firmament or the dome? And I stated before in previous videos, those that are new to my channel don't understand the concept. Basically, there is nothing beyond the firmament besides the waters above in heaven. So, when it comes to so-called meteorites and asteroids, all they are are falling stars that are within the firmament. There's nothing beyond the firmament that can penetrate and fall to the ground or fall to earth. Now, just taking a look at the definition of a shooting star, it's supposedly a meteorite burning up as it enters Earth's atmosphere. The why call it a shooting star? This is the Freemasons behind the scenes that love to mock that's exactly what it is, and that's why they call it a shooting star. But, of course, they give you a false definition. Interesting enough, I saw this video with supposed Dr. Robert Hurt. I'll discuss him a little bit more. First off, I want to explain something here. This is a video from the Science Channel, which he's a part of, and it states in the title, A Real Shooting Star. Get into that in a second, but first off, just take a look at his hand position. Anybody out there that knows about Freemasonry, they're all about signs and symbols. For those that are deceived, believe in NASA, believe in ISS, believe in all the garbage they feed us, you know nothing about Freemasonry, and that's why you are deceived. Just taking a look at another Freemasonic deceiver with the 119 ministries to reverse that. Satanists work on opposites. It's 9-11. You see the same exact hands. I understand. Everybody that's propped up in this world are Freemasons. They are part of shaping and forming society at every imaginal angle possible. And that's how they do it. That's why people believe what they believe. Because everybody propped up, they're part of the club of deceivers. Let's get back to this video here. Again, it's titled A Real Shooting Star. But here's the problem. They don't show any real shooting stars. All you get is fake garbage, animation, and again, people buy this as real, even though all you get is animation. Let's take a look at, again, supposedly a real shooting star. Myra is one of the best of these stars in the sky. It's just a small secret. Scientists have only just discovered a new one called the Lyra of Light. The hidden you. So, in this video presentation, they gave us all this fake garbage. Fake CGI, satellites, fake space, everything's fake. But we're supposed to believe it's real because they say so. Continue. The first showcase explores exciting new results in astronomy with your host, Dr. Robert Hurt. Today, well, before I even play this presentation, let's take a look at the supposed Dr. Robert Hurt. Taking a look at his bio on Wikipedia. Let's take a little look here and see it states here. Robert Hurt is part of IPAC at the California Institute of Technology. Holds a PhD in physics from the University of California. Hurt, Hurt produced the first published artist concepts of the trans. Neptunian object 90377 Sedna from data obtained by the Spitzer Space Telescope. So no real images. He's just doing artistic concepts basically and that's what you get again just like this video where it shows nothing but garbage. Let's take a look play this a little bit here. Today the Hidden Universe is taking a break from our usual Spitzer Space Telescope discoveries in the infrared part of the spectrum. Instead we're moving to the other side of visible light. NASA's Galaxy Evolution Explorer is an Earth-orbiting telescope with an ultraviolet eye to the universe. The ozone layer in our atmosphere screens out most of the incoming ultraviolet light. That's great for cutting down on sunburns, but it means astronomers need space-based telescopes, like Galax, if they want to see them. Fake garbage. 100% bogus from the ball Earth to the supposed satellite which do not exist. That's why they give us, again, the CGI fakery. What's going on out there? 
And what's going on turned out to be quite a surprise when a team led by Dr. Chris Martin of Caltech stumbled across this ultraviolet marvel. Do you think it's a comet? At first glance, so do a lot of astronomers, but it's nothing so ordinary. Comets which travel within our solar system are seldom longer than the distance between the Earth and Sun. This spectacular discovery surrounds the star Myra and spans 13 light years. That's three 13. times further yeah. than from 13, us to that the number next 13. star. What's pretty cool about this result is not only was it unexpected, it was kind of an accident. Dr. Mark Seibert, part of the research team, explains. There you go again, like I stated. The Masonic hand sign passing it off to another Freemason, liar and deceiver. And again, the title is a real shooting star, and we don't get one, of course. Galax's primary mission is to map the entire sky in the ultraviolet. When this discovery for Myra was made, we weren't specifically targeting Myra. It just happened to be one of our fields of view. So when the images came down, and we just happened to be going through them, we noticed this very bizarre nebulosity around it. It was quite a surprise because nobody expected to see anything in the ultraviolet around Myra. Nobody expected to see a tremendously long 13 light meter. There's a reason this guy's not looking directly at the camera. He's reading off a script. Just an actor, just a deceiver. That's all he is. Tail behind the curtain. So what do we know about Myra? And why would it have such a unique tail? It's a well-known variable star, which appears red to the naked eye when it's bright enough to see. Even though it's only 20% more massive than the sun, Myra is so large that it would swallow even the orbit of Mars. Because of their size, red giants lose their gravitational grip on their outer layers, blowing material away in a kind of stellar wind. Over the course of tens of thousands of years, this material forms a trailing tail. We see this tail because Myra is moving unusually fast relative to its neighboring stars. Where it's winds? Just fiction. This is just like Star Trek. Passed off as real to the gullible masses. Slams into the local interstellar medium, a leading shockwave or bow shock forms. The researchers theorize that hot electrons from the shock mix with the wind and stream around and behind, forming the tail. Excited hydrogen molecules begin to glow. Hydrogen naturally emits in the ultraviolet, and the soul is just waiting to be discovered by Galax. In fact, I'd like to think of Myra as a true shooting star. Most people, when you say shooting star, think of meteoroids burning up through the atmosphere with a very brief flash of light. But this is a true shooting star, a star traveling supersonically, creating a bow shock, and leaving a luminous tail behind it, uh, also a true. Since our own sun will become a red giant in several billion years, Myra gives us a chance to look into our own system's future. By looking back along Myra's tail, we see progressively older material tracing its outflow history back as much as 30,000 years. Give me a break. It's a kind of fossil record of the final breaths of a dying star. So what we see with Myra is a dramatic example of the recycling of stellar materials. Uh, the tail is leaving the seeds for new planets, new stars, the elements of carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, all laid out for us, almost like a ticker tape that we hope to be able to study in a way that we've never really been able to study this process before. It's remarkable that even after 400 years of scientific scrutiny, Myra still harbors astounding secrets. Missions like the Galaxy Evolution Explorer open our eyes to a whole new way of seeing what's all around us, and sometimes let us catch a shooting star. For the Spitzer Science Center, I'm Dr. Robert Hurt. Give me a break. Nothing but lies, nothing but propaganda. These people, again, propped up, unknowing masks that are deceived to the lie system. They have no understanding what's taking place. They just, you know, they say, oh, even though this is all animation, this is this has to be true. Why would they be lying to us? This is all about hiding God. There's no space. Space does not exist as far as deep space. There's inner space. Just like that movie title. And again, taking a look at Robert Hertz's Wikipedia profile here, where it states, of course, he does work with NASA, with the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. He's also part of Sigma Pi, basically a Freemasonic society, and a part of the American Astronomical Society as well. So again, nothing more than a Freemason deceiver, 
just one of many that are propped up part of the deception of hiding God in the truth of the flat earth. With respect to space and space exploration, at some point in the future, we're going to look back and say, how did we do it without space? We're going to look back and say, how did we do it without space? I know we have still not shattered that highest and hardest glass ceiling, but someday someone will, and hopefully sooner than we might think. Although we weren't able to shatter that highest, hardest glass ceiling this time, thanks to you, it's got about 18 million cracks in it. And it may be hard to see tonight, but we are all standing under a glass ceiling right now. And it's true, today men and women don't share the field. But who knows about tomorrow? Because if the world needs to get equal, the bold need to get started. Everyone says this is a huge challenge. Of course it is. But you know what we say? Challenge accepted. The pitcher, steroid Santa Claus, kicks and deals. It's a long fly ball going back. And the ball shatters the sky, bringing the ocean itself down into the stadium. Oh, Simpson just broke this dream's reality wide open. When a man reaches the edge, after he goes as far as any man can possibly go, How does his son continue? Space, the final frontier. Space may be the final frontier, but it's made in a Hollywood basement. At some point in the future, we're going to look back and say, how did we do it without space? space. The stars, our only hope. Human action resounds in the heavens. The bell echoes above. What we decide here today will polish or crack the firmament. What shall it be? Human action resounds in the heavens. The bell echoes above. What we decide here today will polish or crack the firmament. What shall it be?
from Black Ops that was released by PlayStation 4 just a couple years ago. Take a look at this scene. Unbelievable how they give us the truth in plain sight. And a lot of these fanboys with video games and NASA, they don't understand what's happening, what's right in front of their faces. Just take a look at here at the flat earth model in plain sight. It's funny. Underneath it says, yay science. Take a look. Definitely 100%, as you can see, the sun and the moon flat earth model. And it says underneath here, the text acquired from the black market reserves. And again, yay, science, just mockery. And this is basically biblical, hanging over nothing. And so, again, they give us the truth in these places, just like this one video game that's, I believe, currently being developed. I'm not sure when the exact release date is. And it's called Solar Warden. And again, the Flat Earth Truth in Plain Sight. And you see it here with the, it says here, experience the truth of Earth. And of course, the Flat Earth model again, the truth of Earth. Again, mockery. Now, I find this very interesting here where they show the Flat Earth. And this is a misrepresentation. Anybody that knows anything about Flat Earth knows this is all we have. We basically just have the Flat Earth with a dome. And deep space is nothing but a hoax. All we have is inner space. And what I find interesting is the dragon itself. It reminds me of this one scene which I've covered before in a video from Star Trek The Next Generation. Let's take a listen to the dialogue that is said here. The course in ancient history at Starfleet Academy about the time when men still believed the Earth was flat and that the sun revolved around it and that if a ship sailed too far out into the ocean it would fall off the edge of the world. Beyond this place, there be dragons. He says, beyond this place, there be dragons. And of course, it gets back to the scene here with the dragon. And as you've seen here, I just broke away from it momentarily. From the latest Star Trek series called Star Trek Picard, you see the breaking of the ferment. Of course, mockery of God's ferment. And you see the star falling, the fallen stars, the fallen diamond from the sky. And it reminds me of this, of course, with Captain Picard. And the, again, the connection with the Flat Earth. He mentioned the Flat Earth. They talk about the Flat Earth. And I have no doubt whatsoever the name Picard, besides being 33 in numerology, is spelled differently than this Picard, the scientist Picard. Dr. August Picard with the double C's from 1931 from Popular Science where he mentions when, he's go, when he goes up 10 miles high and he sees a flat disc with an upturned edge. So definitely, you know, the flat earth reference once again when it comes to the Star Trek episode with Captain Picard, no doubt whatsoever the flat earth truth in plain sight once again, in the aspect of entertainment, just like this scene I've covered before as well with this music video, Corn. And just take a look here. As you see, the song called Coming Undone. And you see the ferment, the sky cracking, all in plain sight. The truth in plain sight. Once again, this is how they do it. Nothing's hidden in this world. They put the truth in plain sight.